Hello everyone. Today I will be adding pathfinding algorithm to our strategy game. So I will start with creating a class that is going to contain all the algorithms and it will be independent of the rest of the code base. That means there won't be any mentions of tile maps, tiles or points inside this class. Now, instead, I will write it such a way that it will be applicable to any problem. So, we don't want any of the initial functions or it won't inherit from mono behavior. So, let's put this into a namespace. Now, this class is going to work with anything, not just tiles. So, it could be vector3, it could be vector3 int. So, I'll put here a generic type. In this case, it will be T. So whatever the T is, our nodes will be that type. Then uh, we want to have a way to limit the number of calculation steps just in case the user gives such a pathfinding problem that it would take too long to solve. So we don't want this. Instead, the program should just have a patience. And if the patience is over, it should stop. Now, what I will be employing here is the A star algorithm. This pathfinding method doesn't find the best solution, but it finds a really good estimation without performing too many calculations. The A star requires two things from the map. These are an heuristic distance from the given node to the end node. It just needs to be an approximation. It doesn't even need to be a good approximation, just as long as the heuristic distance increases with the true distance, that's good enough. And then, we need a function that gets all the neighboring nodes of a given node and the distances. Then we need to store some data about each node. Now this data is going to store three things. G will be calculated or the true distance from each node to the start point. And H will be a heuristic distance from that node to the end point. And we will have F which will return the total. Since F is total we can just keep it as a property so whenever we call f it's going to return the summation of the g and h then we need the actual function that performs the pathfinding. So let's call it generate path. It will take a start node and an end node and outputs a list of nodes that are going to be the steps from the start to end. First of all, let's store the patients in somewhere else. The A star uses two stacks. Now, each stack stores information. Now, we're going to have a closed stack, which is going to store the list of nodes that are already considered and don't need to be considered anymore. And we're going to have an open stack, which is going to hold the nodes that are available for consideration and also their node data. We will start with the start node. So we add it to this uh, open node at the beginning and create a node data for it.
g is going to be 0 since it is at the start and the h is the approximate distance to the end. And a directions dictionary, it will hold the best step towards the target from any node. Then we need to iterate in a loop. I will control this loop with the patience. And I will drop the patience for every iteration so the algorithm can stop. Now, at every iteration, we will consider if the open has nodes. If there is no node, then there is no path between these two points. Otherwise, we can take the one node from the open. Obviously, we want the shortest route, so we need to find a node with the smallest f value. I will employ system link, which makes it very convenient to find the node with the minimum f value. We will simply apply an accumulator function, and it picks the first element from the open and iterates through the rest. And if there is any other smaller f, then it will pick that one and continue until all elements are processed. And whichever node is left at the end, that is the node with the smallest f value. So we feed the aggregate with a function that is going to be used to compare elements of the open. And it will return the one with the lowest f. Let's store the node data in a separate variable too. Then we remove this from the open and add to the closed since we will process it now. Then we iterate through the neighbors of this selected node. And for this, we will use the function that we will assign. So the Pathfinder class doesn't know what function this is, but it's just going to take it from the uh, argument, from the get neighbor and step cost argument. If this neighbor was already considered, then we are not interested in it, so we can skip. If the neighbor was not enclosed, then we need to calculate its G and H scores. 
Now G score is calculated as the sum of the distance information from the dictionary that we obtained using the function from outside and the G score of the current node. And the H score is going to be the heuristic uh, distance. If open doesn't contain this neighbor, or it does, but the G-score that we calculated is actually less than the G-score that was stored inside open, then we need to update open as well as directions. The directions is updated, so the best step to the neighbor is now from the current node. Don't worry about the direction, we will reverse it later. Then we need to update the node data in open. First we calculate the heuristic distance. Then if the open doesn't contain the neighbor, we create a node data for the neighbor. Now we have to consider the end. If we finally reach the end node, then we need to check this at every iteration. Since we define the node as a generic type, we can't just check with an equal sign, so it won't work. So instead, we use the equals function. Then we create a new list that will store the path. I will use the traceback step to keep track of the steps. This will go backwards from the end to start. Since current node is the end, we can assign to it. Next is iterating until we reach the start node. We add the current traceback step into the final path list, and then we decide the next traceback step from the directions dictionary. Once we fill up the final path, then we reverse it since we are going from start to end and assign this to the path. And finally, we can return true, implying that we found the path. Now, let's consider what happens if we cannot find any route. Then we will return false, meaning there is no path, but we still have to assign the paths, so let's assign it with an empty list. Now, let's create a script that will draw the path on the map between the two tiles for us. The script will not be a script that we will be using in the actual game. We will use it only for testing. So let's keep it in the test folder. For this script, I'll be needing a tile map to draw on. and I will need a start and end point. These will store the two points that we will draw in between. And we need a Boolean to store if we have both of the start and end points assigned by the user. And we need the path and the pathfinder.
Now let's create this pathfinder in the start. We will also need to assign the get heuristic distance and get neighbors and step cost functions. Since it's easier to access them directly, let's take, make them public in the pathfinder script. Now we need to create these two functions. And these, these functions though will be required by the actual game code so we can keep them in the map script. First, let's create a distance estimator. This distance could be the Euler distance or it could be Manhattan distance. It could be the squares of Eulers as long as it is some sort of a distance. The Manhattan distance simply finds the distance in axes and at the differences. So it's like difference between two building blocks in Manhattan. You can't fly over the building, so you have to follow the streets. That's the where the name comes from. It doesn't matter how, but it's the simplest one, so we can use that one. It doesn't matter how it makes an estimate of distance. As long as it is an estimation, we can use that one. Then we need a function that returns a dictionary of nodes and floats. In our case, these nodes are vector tree int and the distances are floats or ints. Then we iterate through the neighbors function, which we created before in the extension. I will rename this function since other methods also start with capital. And we add the neighbor to the list along with the movement cost and return. But we need to make sure that we only return the neighbors that are within the map. So we can use a topology map to assure that the tile is within the map boundaries. Also, there is something to consider in get movement cost. We need to make sure a road tile or a river tile is in the map so we can consider taking the movement bonus or costs. Now this way, if there is no road tile or river tile, then we won't be getting any error. Now we can set these functions to the pathfinder. Now remember, we need to use the lambda functions. We just can't enter the name of the, the methods here because the methods themselves are also types. Now let's complete the update. We will assign the ends using the mouse click. If both ends are assigned, then we restart the process. During which we assign the start cell from the input. and then we set the z-axis to zero, 
That is because the screen point is above the map and we're just trying to bring the um, start cell to the map level. If both ends assigned is false, that means the start cell is assigned but the end is not. So we assign the end cell. And then once we assign it, we can identify the path using our function. So we will call the generate path from the pathfinder, but this will be done only once. At every update, if the ends are assigned and the path is not empty, because it can be empty if there is no path, then we want to draw the path. So let's draw it in a function called draw path gizmo function. It will iterate through the path and draw the line between the consecutive pairs of the path. Since this path didn't include the start position, let's add the start node if we find the path as well. Oh, and before you forget, we need to reverse this pool every time we click so it can revert to the assignment. Let's see what we have. Okay, so we have the map, we have roads and docks and everything. If we left click, exactly this is what we want to see. We can see that the, a line is being formed between the points that are mostly using the roads. Now we're forgetting we can add something though. We can add that it's using any cost as a way to get on the land. Now what we can do, we can um, make it so that between the sea and the land, the only uh, point of uh, pa passage is going to be the docks. So once we are giving away the neighbors, we can also check if they are the both land or if they are both water or if any of them is a dock then it is also acceptable Let's check again. And when I try to find a path between the land and the sea, it only passes through the dock. And on the land, it prefers roads. Well, it's nice to see it working. I hope you liked it too, because after all, this pathfinding solution can be adopted in many settings. Soon I will be uploading this Pathfinder to Unity Asset Store for free and once it's reviewed I will leave a link in the description. So please subscribe so you won't miss the next video where I will continue with creating scriptable objects for converting goods in our production chains. See you soon and good luck with your projects!